I mean, see, the thing is about most smokers that I know, most of them. Now, I can't say all of them, but I will say most of them. You know, we've all been, as much as these new rules and so on have kind of been annoying, you know, we understand. Most of us do. Like, I understand. Okay, from my perspective, I completely understand. You know, if you don't want to smoke, that's your decision. You know, Mm -hmm. whatever. I can't make you do it. And, you know, hey, good on you for never picking up the habit. (coughs) That being said, I'm not going to sit there and smoke around you. I'm not going to force it upon your kids. I'm not going to force it upon my kid. Mm. I, I refuse to smoke around someone who is not a smoker unless they say it's okay. And if we're in a building where you can smoke, I'm like constantly asking, are you sure this is okay? Are you sure you don't mind? You know. So not all of us are sitting there going, yeah, I'm going to smoke and then blow this in your face. Yeah. (laughs) So, So, I mean, I guess the big problem is with, like, okay, Smokers aren't a problem. Non-smokers aren't a problem. It's those people that used to smoke that no longer smoke. That's that's the problem. Yeah, they're sort of like born-again Christians. Yes. You know, anybody else who does it is a sinner and they will go to hell. Exactly. And those are the those are the whistleblowers. Those are the ones that are sitting there causing this big problem, this big, you know, stir. Because like okay, you and me you're not a smoker, I am a smoker. If we were to hang out and I were to say, hey, I'm going to go step outside, you wouldn't like it, but you wouldn't sit there and go, oh, you're going to die. Oh, you're going to do this. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You're such a horrible person because you smoke. You'd just be like, okay, you know, just wash your hands or whatever before you come back in. Mm. But a person that used to smoke that no longer smokes, they go absolutely batshit crazy. Yeah, they're like, you know that's going to kill you one day, and you're like, ah, duh. Uh, Yeah, it says so on the package, like right here. Smoking causes lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema, and may complicate pregnancy. Yeah, I can read. Mm Mm-hmm. You be as educated, my dude. I'm in the beginning (laughs) and more. But you know what amazes me so much about this is the fact that tobacco companies basically fund government. Yeah, exactly. It's like, that's what I keep trying to tell people. Okay, I get the fact that um, you know, you're trying to get people to stop smoking because it is a bad habit. Being a smoker, I will completely agree with you. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, if everyone stops smoking at once, it won't just hurt the tobacco company. The entire economy is going to collapse because ever since the 1920s, when all of this kind of really, you know, took off. You know, you saw it in movies and that's when it became cool and suddenly everyone smoked, including doctors and nurses and all these people. And it became such a huge part of the industry. Now there are tobacco farms. There are, you know, whole factories dedicated to this all over the country. If all of those were to shut down at once, the economy would plummet. Mm, it would. And then you'd get your backwater tobacco farmers, you know, they'd grow it. It they'd... would basically be another prohibition thing. Not prohibition. Yeah. Is it prohibition? Yeah. yeah. Prohibition. Uh, they'd be I'd... sneaking it in. You'd have the speakeasies, except instead of liquor, it would be, you know, cigarettes. But, on the other hand, would having it come from a backyard make it safer? Because this it is wouldn't true. have all the chemicals and, you know, the poisons and the extra shit involved with it, pardon my S word. But, you know, would would that make cigarettes not as deadly as they currently are? Well, see, and the thing is, if they were, because I know some tobacco companies have started doing this. They started cu- cutting down on the nicotine, and the nicotine is what you're actually addicted to. You're not addicted to smoking. If if you are, it's more so to have something to do with your hands. I know a lot of smokers that could quit at any point. It's just it's simply because they don't have anything to do with their hands. I'm one of those smokers. Mm. Like if I have something to do with my hands, I don't want a cigarette. If I'm sitting there with nothing to do with my hands, I want a cigarette. Exactly. It's it's a boredom thing. 
It is. It really is. Or, or you just do it just not realizing that you're doing it. But they're starting to cut down on the nicotine. Normal cigarettes, like actual tobacco, like I know here we have um, – some Native American cigarettes, which don't have nearly as many chemicals, they don't have nearly as many, um, you know, tobacco or not tobacco. Nasty. Cigarettes have no tobacco. Nicotine is what I was trying to say. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so they're actually it seems weird to say this about a cigarette, but they're healthier for you. Well, they're not as deadly. They're not healthier. Yeah, but they're not as deadly. But what amazed me was back in the day. Like doctors here, I don't know about there, but they used to prescribe them as stress relief. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, okay, right? Hmm. And you know that, um, like here, the number one brand smoked by doctors was um, Camel. Mm. They actually used to have, uh, like back in the 50s, I believe, commercials where doctors would be smoking, and that's how they would um, promote their uh, cigarette is because, you know, this is the doctor's number one brand. And there, I remember seeing one commercial where a child was smoking a cigarette. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, it kind of makes me worried about toothpaste commercials now. Because, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, if they did that with cigarettes, what the hell are they putting in our toothpaste? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, anyway, we have run about ooh, 15 minutes over. <laughs> Oops. So we need to kind of wrap it up. So yes. thank you for my birthday wish. Thank you. Thank You're... you to anybody who wished me a happy birthday. I had a fantastic <coughs> day chasing around the Doctor Who's and the Daleks and the R2 whatever what it was thing. R2, me too. No, no, it was a black one. I haven't put the picture up on Facebook yet. Well, there's your problem. And then, of course, chasing around shirtless guys and all that. You're such a pervert. Yeah, but, you know, the best bit is you just send hubby off to the madman thing. He doesn't notice. <laughs> here you you go run off over here I'm going to go stare at shirtless men yeah playing you know guitar hero and then we had Superman singing kryptonite which was very funny <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, I love it okay so we'll see everyone next week hopefully for another Friday catch up so bye yes. everyone bye This has been the Friday Catch-Up, powered by the Paraquest Radio Network. Remember to catch the Hostess with No Ghostess every Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Paraquest Radio Network. Oh. <sighs>